Thank the gentleman. The chair recognizes the uh, chairman of the um, Oversight and Investigations Subcommittee, the gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Stupak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Waxman and I sent that letter yesterday, and uh, Mr. Tillerson, uh, he'd respond a little bit to it. And, and we talked about the five areas where we feel BP should have done things differently to get control of this uh, well. In fact, they used the word nightmare well in, in one of the uh, emails that we looked at and put in our report. And, and I was struck, Mr. Tillerson, um, you indicated in, in your testimony, uh, based on the industry's extensive experience, you state that what we do know is that when you properly design wells for the range of risk anticipated, follow the established procedures, build in layers of redundancy, properly inspect and maintain equipment, train operators, conduct tests and drills, and focus on safe operations and risk management, tragic incidents like the one we're witnessing in the Gulf today should not occur. And I mention that because in today's post, the exact same words are there, exactly the same as your testimony, but it's attributed to Kenneth P. Cohn, ExxonMobil's VP of Public and Government Affairs. And in my opening statement, I mentioned how in your 500-page response plan, 40 is on press, and that you all stay on script. I got to compliment you. You're all on script. You're using the same words. But that was the problems with the well, as Mr. Wexman pointed out in his testimony. So what about are you all on script that if it wasn't BP but one of you, one of your companies, if that was you and the blowout happened on April 20th, if you had received the call that there was a subsea blow at your well instead of BP's, would you have been prepared to stop the leak and prevent oil from reaching the sensitive coastal areas? So would your company have been ready, Mr. Tillerson? We would have been ready to implement our oil spill response plan. That's that nine-page plan, right? That's that 500-page plan you referred to. Okay, there's and only then, nine on oil site, removal. 40 on media, specific. nine on oil removal. So that nine pages would have been able to prevent the oil from hitting the Gulf Shores? The nine-page plan would have done what the nine-page page plan says it's intended to do, and it says to okay. the maximum extent practicable. Okay. How about you, Mr. Watson? I would tell you, Tom, Congressman, that our emphasis is on uh, prevention of that spill. You were talking about... Sure, but let's say this. You got the call on April 20th. Your, your well just blew. What would you have done? Before the incident? Yes. We would have exercised stop work authority. Okay. Well, we, we have rigorous stop work authority, not only written down, but we use stop work authority. Okay, but your well blew up, so what would you do? We, we would activate our spill response plan. Okay. To That's about five pages, I think, in your proposal, right? Yes. To remove the oil? See, my concern is, Mr. Tillerson, Mr. Mobison, uh, Chevron and Shell's worst case scenario is 200,000 barrels per day in their response plan. Exxon Mobil's is 166 barrels per day. That's a lot more than what's currently leaking out into the Gulf. So on paper, these plans, and you're going to rely on these plans, might seem real reassuring, but reality shows you can't prevent the oil from reaching the Gulf shores. So Mr. Tillerson, Exxon Mobil states in its response to the pre-hearing questions that Exxon Mobil is prepared to meet all the commitments in its permits, including those involving a worst case, safe case scenario. So do you stand by that statement? I do, because the permit does not guarantee that the oil will not get to the shore, nor does it guarantee that it will all be contained. Well, we're at what? At most 40,000 barrels today? I don't know. 40,000, I think, is what we've been saying, I think, for the record. So ExxonMobil's worst-case scenario is over 160,000 barrels per day. So how can you say that you'd be able to control a spill that's four times bigger than the current spill using the same plan BP has with the same contractors BP is using? As I said, Congressman, we would use the, the response capability to the maximum extent practicable, okay. and in the models that... Okay that we provide as part of the permitting, which are in conformance with what the regulatory bodies require. Your plan, your plan and I would is written there by the same impact. contractor that BP is. BP relied on Marine Spill Response Corporation to provide response equipment, and so does your plan. So if you can't handle 40,000, how are you going to handle 166,000 per day, as you indicate? The answer to that is when these things happen, we are not well 
equipped to deal with them. So when these things happen, these worst case scenarios, we can't handle them, correct? We are not well equipped to handle them. There will be impacts, as we are seeing. And we've never represented anything different than that. And you've all said that. And that's that why the emphasis is always on preventing these things from occurring, because sure. when they happen, we're not very well equipped to deal with them. And that's just a fact of the enormity of what we're dealing with. But they do happen. And in an answer to Mr. They just happened. Mr. Waxman, you said, yep, it's cookie cutter plans, and we call upon the same resources. The resources for BP are not enough. So no matter which one of the oil companies here before us had the blowout, the resources are not enough to prevent what we're seeing day after day on the Gulf. Not only the loss of 11 people, but we're on day, what, 56 or 57 of oil washing up on shores. There is no other plan, there's no way to stop what's happening until we finally cap this well. Correct? That is correct. So, but for the grace of God, there goes I, right? It's BP this time. It could be ExxonMobil tomorrow. It could be Chevron tomorrow. It could be not, if we, not if we follow our practices and procedures, it won't be. But if it does, we can't handle it. We can't handle the spill. This well, worst case scenario is pie in the sky and oil in our water and on our shores. It's a scenario that the MMS and the Coast Guard require us to calculate using their methodologies, and that's why it's in there. But, but to your point, and I think that's all that matters is, the point is we, we have to take every step to prevent these things from happening because when they happen, it is a fact that we're not well equipped to prevent any and all damage. Sure. There will be damage occur. Sure. We satisfy the application, but in reality, we can't respond to a worst case scenario. We are responding. A response is underway. It is having some effect as if there were no response, but there is no response capability that will guarantee you will never have an impact. It does not exist and it probably will never exist. Nor do you have ability to respond to the worst case scenario. If we can't handle 40,000, how can we handle 166? Okay. The gentleman's time has expired. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Shimkus.